Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight the Wapakoneta Redskins welcome in the Salina Bulldogs. I'm Danny Hobart alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. Tonight's pregame and keys to the game are sponsored by Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. And our premier sponsor for Wapakoneta is Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Gilly, what a matchup we got. Everything's on the line. Salinas already got the league title wrapped up. Wapak wants a piece of it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it right now. The immovable object versus the unstoppable force. I'm telling you, <laughs> you know what? If you if you want to see a treat tonight, this is two ball clubs. We set and we contemplated on the keys tonight. We're going to combine the three keys because we think it's a coin flip. Absolutely. We think it's a coin flip on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. We think the linebackers, it's a coin flip, and the back end on both teams is is a, is a coin flip. Yeah, Gilly, we haven't had a, a game like this with this much uh, – is even this a word? I mean, they are a mirror image of each other. It's the number one rushing defense against the number one rushing offense. And you think about this: both teams started, you know, started out with two with an L each on the season, and then, you know, Wapak takes a tumble against Defiance, so they're playing for a piece of the championship. Those three keys tonight, Danny. Number one, you got to you know, make sure you take care of the football on both sides of the football. Turnovers is going to play a big part. Sure. I think number two has got to be the trenches. The man down inside on both sides of the football. Who's going to win that battle? And number three, the kicking game. We're going to see two of the premier <laughs> kickers within yeah. this area that can both boom the football. Well, I said this earlier tonight. You and I were talking off the air, and I said, what a great night for a kicker because, look, it is a wet condition, but we're on carpet. The wind is blowing very strong one way, so that could play a huge factor in the game. I think it's going to play a huge factor. And the other thing that I didn't mention, Danny, I truly believe it's not going to be the ball out into the flats. I think it's going to be the football that's going to have to be thrown down the seam on a vertical uh, uh, play tonight because teams are just, the, both teams are going to man up and they're going to play man press coverage and they're going to make you beat them. You're going to have to do it through the air. Well, partners, settle in because we're going to dandy for the Western Buckeye League title and Wapakoneta will be kicking off deep to Salina. Salina Salina's Got three back, basically at the five-yard line. And look, Gilly, we've seen Kyle Beach a ton of times. Nobody's catching this one. <laughs> right at the goal. He steps in the end zone, and he's yep, they're going to call it a touchback. Yep, they're going to call it a touchback. So that's where Salina will take over at the 20-yard line. You realize he almost made a liar out of you, didn't he? I know. You're right. He caught him right in the end zone. Salina will be led on the field, Gilly, by number three quarterback Bobby Morris, the 5'10", 155-pound junior, 52 of 85 for 625 yards, seven touchdowns, and five interceptions. It should be noted, Gilly, and we know this from last week, they will play Braylon Gabes at the Wildcat position on a lot of possessions. Absolutely. You're, you're doggone right. We watched them and had them last week, and I got to see Wapak against Kenton, and it's going to be a heck of a physical game down inside. So here's Morris in the gun. He's got Gabus off to his right. He's got three to the right, one to the left. He's in the shotgun formation. Morris takes the ball. Fakes the throw. He's going to go far up the right side. And almost picked up. Almost a reception. Gilly, it went through the defensive back, and the wide receiver almost made an incredible catch. Yes, absolutely. Went with a little stop and go action right there. Went vertical, didn't he? I mean, they he finally did. they tried to extend the defense and trying to see who broke that up. I think it was Nate Metzger that broke it up. And then, like you said, that thing was almost secured by Salina. The intended target was number two, Xander Jones, as it just missed on his outstretched arms. Bobby Morris is back in the gun. You'll see John Lutz run the ball a lot tonight for the Bulldogs, and they will depend on that big offensive line, Gilly. Oh, they love to pull their guards. There they come. Off to the left side, and that Wapakoneta defensive line is stout. And there you see... Big number 45, Joey Truesdale. We're going to call his name a lot tonight, Gilly. He is a heck of a linebacker. Boy, he laid the wood. Him and Naus both. That's what I'm saying. And then on the flip side, you look at the linebackers, Ackley and Lehman for uh, an Allstetter for Salina. Kelly, you look at both these teams. Wapakoneta comes in averaging 32 points a game. Salina comes in averaging 29 points a game. 
Defensively, Wapak only gives up eight points a game. That's the separate here. Salina gives up 16, Wapak eight. So here's Morris in the gun, looks across the middle. He's going to be under heavy pressure. He's going to throw the ball to the left. He's got a man out there. And looks that is close to a first down. His intended target, number 11, John Lutz. I think they got him spotted out at about the 28. Looked like and he stepped be, out yep, of bounds be this near boundary. Fourth down. Our first call of the quarter, whether you're interested in associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lakewright.edu to apply today. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. So Salina is in punt formation. They'll punt deep to Wapakoneta. Back, back deep for Wapakoneta. And they're about the 35 yard. They snap was low. And they're going to try to pick up the first down. And he's going to be. Oh, no. Be, he said oh, he stepped no. out. Said he stepped out. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. We did not talk about that. And Gilly, turnovers could play a huge part. Oh, in that this was game. mentioned. Yeah. That was no, mentioned. That's right, that's right. It was say. mentioned. Naughty, right. naughty. But no, it was mentioned. But, you know, that was a bad, bad snap right here. I think he panicked. I think he could have got rid of the football on a kick. But then again, he's the one playing, and we're standing up here announcing the game, you <laughs> right. know? And, Gilly, you saw he missed it by, by inches. He, he stepped out of bounds, and it had to be less than a foot. Oh, absolutely. So here comes the Wapakoneta Redskins. They'll be led on the field by number two, Caleb Moyer, the 6'2", 185-pound sophomore. He is the coach's son, 181 of 148, 10 touchdowns and four interceptions. He's got Jace Nouse in the backfield. He's got two receivers to the left. He's going to hand the ball to Nouse. Nouse goes off the left side behind that big offensive line, and he's going to rumble and bumble for a gain of about five yards. Big cutback right there by the young man, Merlin, on the stop. You're going to call that name a lot, Gilly. We talked about him a lot. Mr. Merlin is a man in the middle. Yeah, the linebackers, like we said, on both sides of the football, Lehman, Allstetter, they cover a lot of ground. They give him credit for eight yards. That'll make it second and two from the 20-yard line. Jace Naus, the big bruising running back for the Skins. Yeah, he may get 30 touches tonight. He's got 135 carries on the year for 1,035 yards, 13 touchdowns. He smells the end zone. This is Moyer. Moyer's going to keep it himself, goes off the left side. And Gilly, that's two consecutive runs off the left side, so they like that matchup on that left side of the line. Appeared to be Elson on the stop. And that's going to be our first first down of the night. And our first down sponsor tonight is Frost Roofing, family and owner and operator for over 95 years. Join the Frost family. They are an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-ROOF. Boy, we got a lot of reads tonight, a lot of sponsors. We want to thank everybody, don't we? I'm telling you. Well, a lot of people you know, came out for this one. Special thanks to Wapak and his Absolutely. press box. And treated us to pizza and cold drinks. And yeah, they what take, a facility. They take care of us. So here come the skins. First and 10 from the 16. Our first potential score here, the big game here tonight from Wapakoneta High School. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to give it to Naus. Naus goes off the left side, finds a little bit of breathing room, picks up maybe a yard, a yard and a half. Actually got him by the ankles, brought him to the ground. Last week, uh, Wapakoneta took care of business as they defeated Bath, or excuse me, Bath 38 to nothing. Uh, they got a lot of shutouts here. You look at they beat OG 45 to nothing, St. Mary's 14 to nothing, Kenton 35. Defense is the calling card well, for this team. And the thing that you know, you mentioned the Bath score. Bath was putting up some points, sure, and to shut them out. Absolutely. That's a big That's a big win for them. Here's Moyer in the gun. He's got four receivers to his right. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got a man out there in a oh, big that's time a big hit. hit. A big time hit. His intended target, Grant Jolly, was knocked back. Braylon Gabus. Braylon Gabus come out of nowhere. Oh, absolutely. Just knocked him down. I don't think there was a gain at all, Gilly. Oh, he got up ahead of steam, didn't he? And got his shoulder pad into him. Knocked him off balance. Grant Jolly is a heck of an athlete. The 6'2", 185-pound sophomore. Tons of athletes on both of these ball clubs. I'm sorry, I got that confused. He is a 6-foot junior, 165-pound Grant Jolly. He's in motion right now. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to roll to his left. He's under not much pressure. He's going to keep it himself as he tries to get around that corner. Cuts back and a nice pickup of about six, seven yards. And he'll land inside the 10-yard line. Boy, he's close, too. Yeah, trying to see who's on the, the ground here. We got an injury on the field, partner. We got an injury on the field. Injury on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. We're watching high school football on WOSN.
Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. The injured player for Solani is number six, Corbin Lehman, the 5'8", 180-pound junior. He is still down on the ground. Our timeout sponsor tonight is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. So there you see him helping him off the field. He is putting pressure on his leg, which is a good sign there, Gilly, because we were really worried about him. He was in a lot of pain. Oh, he was in a lot of pain and, and you know, Great attention there by the medical staff on both ball clubs. Uh, both the trainer from Salina and Walpaw, Connecticut, come out to, came out there, and he's gingerly. It appears to be the left calf below area. So, well, the skins are in the BB and Auto Repair Red Zone. BB and Auto Repair rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. Here we go, Gilly, fourth and two from the eight yard line. And it looks like the skins are gonna go for it here. And kind of uh, surprises me with as good a defense as both teams have, if Kyle Beach not coming out and knocking in three, but they feel like they can push it in here and get the first down. Well, I think from a confidence standpoint, plus playing at home, Here's Moyer, he's gonna take the go, he's gonna give it to Naus. Naus goes up the middle, and he is going to have the first down. That is awful close, but it looks like from where the officials come in, they're gonna give him a frost roofing first down. So they'll take it to the five yard line. That's where the skins will take it. First and goal from the five yard line. And Gilly, the skins are knocking on the door. Yes, they are. Caleb Gabas on the stop, along with Kobe Thompson. Number 16. Here come the skins. Moira will go under center. He's got two backs off to his left. Hand it to the second one through. He'll go up the middle. Looks like he was close, but he's going to be pushed back. That was number 35, Reese Schnari. Schnari, the 5'11", 185-pound senior. You'll see Schnari carry the ball quite a bit. He's the leading tackler on that defense, Gilly. Well, I'm telling you what, he got, he got met in the hole right there, and he did not go anywhere. They stood him up and actually pushed him backwards. That'll bring it second down, second and goal. Braylon Gabe is on the stop. Here comes Moyer. He's under center. He's got Schnari in the backfield along with Jace Nouse. They'll go Jace Nouse off the left side. He's going to find a hole, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Wapakoneta. Our touchdown spot tonight is Binkley Real Estate, an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley Real Estate is our touchdown sponsor. Yet yeah, Caleb Gabe has had a shot at him, got him down where he needs to around the ankles because he is so doggone strong. But the momentum carried Mr. Niles into the end zone for Six points for the Redskins. That'll bring up Kyle Beach for the extra point. And folks, if you've not seen Kyle Beach kick, it is an absolute treat. This kid is as good a kicker as I have ever seen in high school football. Snap is back, hold is up, and the kick is good. And that is an extra point. Our sponsor tonight for extra points is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Pantry Pride is our extra point sponsor. So with a 6-14 mark in the first quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins take a 7-0 lead. You're watching high school football on W. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert. The Wapakoneta Redskins with 6.14 to go in the first quarter have taken a 7-0 lead. And Gilly, that's pretty much how they wanted to do things. A little bit of pass and a lot of run. Well, the, you know, the misfortune and the bobble on the uh, exchange from snapper to kicker right there. And he tried his best to get to that pylon to get the first down and was two yards short. And basically, field position right there benefited Wapak tremendously and they found their way to the end zone. So Kyle Beach will kick off here to the Salina Bulldogs. And a high, long, deep kick that drives him back to the middle of the end zone where that'll be a touchback. And there you saw the leg, Gilly where that wind has kind of died down a little bit, which is an advantage, I think, for both teams. They both have excellent field goal kickers. You know, if they could have give bonus points the night I watched him play Kent, <laughs> he actually kicked one through the uprights off of a kickoff. Yeah, and I was here uh, I was here last year when he had a 51-yard field goal, and uh, he's, he's sensational. So here come the Salina Bulldogs. They'll start first and 10 from the 20. They'll put Gabus in the Wildcat. They do that a lot, Gilly. They'll run him and Morris in there together, but they've got Gabus in there. He's got one receiver to the right, one in the slot, and one on the left. He's got a man in motion. 
He'll take the snap. He'll give the ball to the first man up. He'll try to go around. This is Lutz. Gets around the edge, and he picks up about six yards. Big John Lutz. He is a load to bring down. Yeah, he's exceptionally quick and has got that extra gear once he gets to the outside. Nice stop right there by Grant Jolly. Gilly, listen to these stats. Braylon Gabus, uh, I call him a running back, quarterback, wide receiver. He's everything for this team. Uh, 61 carries, 591 yards. Gilly, he's got 13 touchdowns on the year. Yeah, there's no question. He's one of the key factors for the green and white. He'll go in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right, one in the slot, and one off to the left of him. He'll take the snap. He'll hand the ball to the first one up. This is Lutz as he goes around the left side, gets a hole, and a nice run for John Lutz. That's going to bring up a frost roofing first down. Big block out there on the outside. And, and Gilly, we, we talked a little bit about this before, but it's very key when Salai, for whoever got down first to come back and have an answer for the opposing team. And right now you see Salina, they didn't hang their heads, they got their you know work boots on, and now they're pushing the ball down the field. Sure. We watched them last week in a defensive tussle that first half with Defiance. They're going, they just need to stay with the game plan. And, and they really rely on that offensive line. Yes, yes, they do. So here comes Gavis in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. And he's not found a lot of room there. He was hit immediately sure by was. big number 64, Caden Ware. The 6'2", 190-pound senior put a lick on him right there in the middle of the hole. Ware and Schnarri appeared to be, <laughs> excuse me. Gilly, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll say this, that I, I really feel, feel like, excuse me, these are two of the best coach teams in the area. They, I mean, you talk about teams that just continue to get better game after game after game. Yes, you know, Coach Moyers established his program coming from Usiris Winford, coming over here, and then obviously the job that uh, Brennan Bader's done. Morris under heavy pressure. He's going to dance around. He goes back to the 20-yard line. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down at the 18-yard line. A huge sack by number 57, Jaden Rampula, the 5'10", 205-pound senior, and he did his job, Gilly. Yeah, he was trying to throw the football, and the wide receivers took a little bit too much time rotating back to the open area, and that allowed Mr. Rampula to run him down and drop him for a huge loss. Yeah, to go, that is huge. And the reason I say that, that brings up third and 25 from the 20 yard line, a 20 yard loss. Morris is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's gonna look off to the right. He's gonna keep it himself, go up the middle. And he is gonna be chased by a host of Redskins. And that's nowhere close to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a fourth down and a punting situation for the line of Bulldogs. Gilly, right now, you know, I said a few minutes ago, I felt like Salina's offensive line was getting going. They had a couple runs in a row with seven, you know, seven plus yards, and then you see the big loss, and that's exactly what happens when you play this Wapakoneta team. They put you in disadvantages each time. Yeah, the pressure that Wapak is putting on right now, you know, it's taking its toll right now on Salina's front five. Kick is up and almost blocked, and it's going to hit at the 45, and it's going to bounce down to the 35, and they'll down it at about the 33-yard line. So that's where the Wapakoneta Redskins will take over. Gilly, you look at Salina. They come into this game 8-0, eight 8-1 and oh, eight and one overall. That only loss is to Mac Fover Sales, the first game of the year. I had that game. They lost 26 to nothing, but since that time, they've reeled off seven, or excuse me, eight wins in a row, and just just fantastic football. Well, you can look at it, you know, one of two ways. You know what? That's a loss at the beginning of the season, or you can look at it. You know what? We took a thumping. We regrouped. Yes, absolutely. And look where we're at now. And the team they lost to. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty doggone good. Pretty good. Wapakoneta comes in at 7-1, seven 7-2 and one, seven and two overall, Gilly. They started out 0-2. Kind of everybody in Northwest Ohio was shocked, but they've really regrouped, and I think they're as good a team as there is in the, in the area. Here comes Naus, a big gain of about 15-yard. Jace Naus off the left side, and there you see how elusive that young man can be, and that is another frost-roofing first down. Yeah, Braylon Gabe is right there. Probably saved himself the touchdown, grabbing onto the back of the jersey, but it cost him an extra five yards in the process because of now's strength but yeah you know i mean you look at the loss they had a 14 point lead yeah against marion local and let that one slip away so and then they you know they 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 had a stumble with defiance but since then 
they've regrouped and they're, you want to play your best football at the end of the season and right now both these ball clubs are. Here comes Moyer, he's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to give the ball to Naus right up the middle. And they like that left side, Gilly, and Jace Naus picks up another six yards and there you see him stumble right through that hole and boy, he is a load to bring down. Thompson on the stop for the Bulldogs. You know, we mentioned earlier, 30 carries, he might get 40. <laughs> You're right. Seriously, I mean, he's just, he's the workhorse. He's a workhorse, yeah. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So 2.26 to go, Skins lead 7-0. Moyer's going to take the ball in the gun, give it to now. so he'll go off the left side, pick up about two and a half, three yards. They are really running on that left side. They like what they see over there. Yeah, they're seeing something on that left-hand side. I'll tell you, Mr. Ackley had a beat on him and just couldn't run him down along with Chilcote. They're running behind that big offensive line. Landon, Miko, Mason Ludwig, Caden Ware, Ryan Price, and Grant Hauser, the 6'5", tied in. So a lot of beef up front for the Redskins. That'll bring up third and four from the 48. Skins lead 7-0. Moyer's in the gun. He's got a man in motion that goes around to the left side. They'll go now off the right side. And a big pickup of about 10 yards and another frost roofing first down. They just keep coming at you, Gilly. Caleb Gabe has got him by the ankles. Well, he just does he does so many things well. You remember the kid Castillo last week? Those type of kids get their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, and they're not going to try to bounce around you. You know what? With that strength, they're going to sure. try to go through you. A lot of people don't realize that young man was dinged up last year and had a bad knee. Here goes Naus again off the left side. He is the workhorse right now, and he's going to pick up another frost roofing first down and two consecutive runs of 20-plus yards. Wapakoneta, Darren, they run the ball 190 yards per game. They average 6.2 yards a carry. There you see why. But you look at Salina, they only give up 143 yards a game. And right now the advantage is with the offensive line of Wapakoneta. Well, and it's not just little yards they're getting. They're getting chunks. Chunks, yeah, and absolutely. It's, they got to be careful because I'll tell you what, Mr. Moyer's an athletic quarterback. He'll pull that ball out and run. <laughs> or here, here – pull up in the pocket and let one go too. Looks like they're going to reset the game clock to 110. We're at 107 here in the first quarter. Skins lead 7-0. Danny Hamburg, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School. The WBL title is on the line. Salina has already secured a share of it and Wapakoneta wants their piece of the pie. Wapakoneta lost their only WBO game, Gilly, to Defiance, that second game of the year, which kind of shocked everybody. But Defiance is a good team. Here comes Naus off the right side, and he picks up another nine-yard gain, Gilly. Gilly, that's 30 yards and three carries. That young man is just chewing up yardage. Yes, he is. Caleb Gabe is on the, Gabe is on the stop. Excuse me. They'll officially call it seven yards. That'll bring up second and third from the 23. Thompson also on the stop. Clock continues to run down. Should be the last play of the first quarter. Moyer's in the gun. He's got now soft to his left. Oh, bad snap. Moyer's going to have to pick it up, and he's going to take a big loss as they slam him down to the ground. And a nice job of the Salina defensive line being Johnny on the spot. And that's going to be a huge loss, Gilly. Yeah, that appears to be Billerman at the bottom of the pile. That was Billerman. That's right, it was Billerman on the stop. We're going to call his name quite a bit, Gilly. Allstetter also. And it looks like... Yeah, he got a gracious spot on that one, didn't he? Yes, he did. And I think that's what they're asking over on the sideline. Well, I'm kind of confused myself, too. I thought it was a lot farther back. But that's it for the first quarter after one quarter play for Wapakoneta High School. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Salina Bulldogs 7 to nothing. We're watching high school football on WOSA. Today's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And our premier sponsor for Wapakoneta tonight is Al's Woody's Diner. Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. 
So, Gilly, they, they got a real favorable spot. We kind of asked the guys here in the press box if they knew anything, and everybody's as confused as we are. Did, he, did his knee go down when he went to grab the ball, or what, what do you think Evident happened? Evidently, they're calling it a dead ball situation where the grasp, grasp excuse me, took place because, yeah, it appeared it was three or four yards behind that, but they're not going to make a change to it. Or let's play on. Yep. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporters of Mercer County Athletics. Wabash Mutual Telephone is our scoreboard sponsor. So here we go, the start of the second quarter. Wapakoneta leads seven to nothing. And Gilly, it, the weather really is cooperating with us. You know, before the game, the rain was coming down hard and uh, this, the, the wind has kind of slowed down a little bit. Oh, it's a little chilly, but e uh, a great of, night for high school football. East of here coming over here, there were some downpours. It sure was. So yeah, it's it's cleared out. Here come the Redskins. They've got Jace Nouse in the backfield with Caleb Moyer. He's going to take the ball, hand it to Nouse off the right side, and there goes Jace Nouse up the middle. He's at the ten. He's at the five, and taken down right about the five yard line. Jace Nouse with another frost roofing first down and a big rumble of about thirty yards. Yeah, trying to see who made that touchdown saving tackle appears to be Braylon Gavis. You know you're in trouble when your defensive backs are your leader ta leading right. tacklers in the contest. And he is in the B&B &B Auto Repair Red Zone. B&B &B Auto Repair rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. Here come the skins. This is Moyer. He's going to go to Nouse on the right side, and he's bottled up. And here comes our first flag of the game, Gilly. Ooh, that's in that area of a possible hold. I think you're right. And that exactly what it is. They're going to get the Wapakoneta offensive line for a hold. And uh, really, when you think about it, first hold of their first play of first, excuse me, first flag of the game. Oh, it's been a very clean played game That'll by both ball clubs. 10 yard penalty. A huge crowd tonight, Gilly. The home stands here is absolutely filled with red. And you look across the way, and I said this earlier too, this place holds just a ton of people. It is a beautiful facility. Yeah, you want to sit here and think, man, there's not many people here tonight. Wow, <laughs> yes, so big. yes, there is. <laughs> there's a lot of people here, Gilly. So here comes Moyer in the skin. He's got Jason Nows off to his left. He's got a single receiver to the right. He's going to go Jason Nows up the middle, and he's going to pick up another five or six yards, and he has to be taken down by three Salina Bulldogs. John Lutz on the stop. Help Allstetter. That'll bring up second and 11 from the 11-yard line. Boy, when the running game is effective here at Wapakoneta, they can do a lot of things Oof. with this offense. And you've got an athletic quarterback like mm -hmm. Caleb Moyer. And as soon as you sell out for the run, that young man will hurt you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with his own legs or his, oh, yeah, his with, arm, his, yeah. with his arm. Here's Moyer in the gun. Jace now off to the left. He's got a man in motion. That's Jolly. He's going to pitch back to Jolly. Jolly tries to go around the left side. He cuts it back to the middle. He's at the five. He's going to be taken down to the three-yard line. And there you see Grant Jolly, the six-foot, 165-pound junior, another weapon for the Skins. Yep, absolutely. Caleb Gabe is on the stop. Great, great block in there by the Redskins, opening up that hole. Also with that lead block by guess who? Our quarter, sponsor, yeah, that's right. Our quarter sponsor tonight is Cisco Funeral Homes. Dedicated to excellence in service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes are family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Cisco Funeral Homes is our quarter sponsor. Here comes Naus. He goes off the left side. He gets to the goal line. And they're going to say he was short. short. They're going to say he was short. And he wasn't short by much, Gilly, because no. half, half of his body was in the uh, end zone, and his knee must have went down. What happened? So doggone quick. Somebody had him by the ankles, and he broke away from it. Or they'd have had him at the line of scrimmage. But that second effort by Naus got him inside that, what, one yard line. It's about a half a yard out. And they're, they're calling this fourth down. Fourth and goal from the one. Here we go, partner. 9-13 to go. Redskins trying to go up two scores. Caleb Moyer goes directly under center. He's going to sneak it in, and he's going to get pushed in, and he's in for the touchdown. They call it a touchdown. A little late call there. A the touchdown. Eagles call that a push-push. <laughs> That's, push. Right. That's right. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. That'll make it 13 to nothing. Sp partner, excuse me. Kyle Beach comes on to attempt the extra point. 
Our extra point sponsor tonight is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Kick is up, and he misses it. He just a low snap, Gilly, and that is unusual. Kyle Beach misses it, and that'll make it 13 to nothing. So with 9.03 to go here until halftime, the Wapakoneta Redskins have extended that lead to 13 to nothing. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert. 9.03 to go. The Wapakoneta Redskins have extended that lead to 13 to nothing. And Gilly, that was the Jason Ouse drive as he was really, really good on that drive. He was very good, but you know what? He don't get them yards without those big hosses on the <laughs> offensive line and that tight end opening up the holes for him. And we haven't even talked about Grant Hauser tonight. The 6'5", 225-pound junior does it all. He can block. He can catch. He's a really good footballer football player. He's he's very athletic. So Kyle Beach, who just missed the extra point, he will kick off to the Bulldogs. Back deep is Braylon Gavis. And they'll go to the right side into the end zone, and they'll call it a touchback. So Salina has got their work cut out for him, Gilly. You know, we're sitting here and it looked like the rain had quit. I apologize. Looking up into those lights, it's still coming down. Yeah, you look into the lights. We're, from our vantage point, we couldn't see. I've got a screen in front of us that makes it. You can't really see the rain. It's not coming down heavy, but it is misting out there. So mm -hmm. maybe that played a part in why Kyle Beach missed that extra point. So here come the Bulldogs. Braylon Gabus will go back into the quarterback position or wildcat position, as we like to call it. He's got two to the left, one to the right. Now the wind is blowing uh, left to right, and the rain is coming down a little harder. Gabus is in the gun. He'll call for the ball. He throws off the left side and just throws it over the head of his intended target, number two, Xander Jones. Boy, and that is close. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that's awful close to being a forward pass there as it went out of bounds. And I think that's what they're asking right now. You know, you know we, we had Salina last week, and they were so dominant in what they did, and they just imposed their will. And right now they just look out of sync. Is that more credit to what Wapakoneta is doing defensively? I think it's the game plan that Wapak is throwing right now. Not that Defiance had a bad one. I mean, what was it, 3 nothing at yeah, halftime? Right. Yeah, yeah. So here's Gabus. He's going to hand the ball off to number two. This is Xander Jones, and he gets away down the left side, and that's the biggest gain of the night for the Salina Bulldogs as they get a frost roofing first down. They absolutely needed that, Gilly. Yeah, they needed that. In the, in, I hate saying it in a bad way, but down 13 to nothing, they needed to have something, you know, to, to take and get that fire going. And nice run right there by Mr. Jones down the far sidelines, breaking through three or four tackles, getting as many yards as he could. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 41. This is as much across midfield as Salinas had all night, Gilly, so maybe something effective here for the dogs. This is Gabus in the gun. He's got two to the left and one in the slot. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go off the right side. He's going to get a nice big gain of about nine yards, and there you see Braylon Gabus followed his tailback right through the hole. Very, very patient with that execution of that offensive play right there. Getting as many yards going behind them linemen. Good job with his vision and turning it up and getting those nine yards. So that'll bring up second and one from the 49. Clock continues to run at 8.24. Mullen on the stop. Gavis is in the gun. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got a lone receiver way out to the left side. Keep an eye on that young man. Gavis is going to, or this is Bobby Morris back in the game. And they'll go. Oh, boy, Mr. Try to go off. Yeah, try to go off the right side. And they hand the ball off to number nine, Parker Berkey, the six foot, 205 pound sophomore. And my goodness, he was hit hard. Yeah, Truesdale got off that block there by Chilcote. Shedded that block and got them shoulders square. Great fundamental tackle. Bobby Morris goes back out of the game, and they'll go back to Braylon Gabus. He's, He's just got gun. that football body, Mr. Truesdale. He sure does. He is a linebacker in every sense of the word. So here's Gabus in the Wildcat. He'll go 
two receivers to his left, a single set back off to the right side. Third and one from the 49. He looks to pass the ball. He's under heavy pressure. Tries to roll out. He's going to throw back. He's got oh, an open he's man. Wide, wide open. open. And the connection made as he goes across the 30 to the 26 yard line. And the connection's made to Xander Jones, the 5'11, 190 pound senior, has the Bulldogs in excellent position. Yeah, that was a breakdown in coverage, miscommunication by the Redskins, and it cost him right there. Great execution by the visitors. Brought down by Reese Schnari on the stop. Our first call of the quarter sponsor is Wright State Lake Uni Campus. Excuse me. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lakewright.edu to apply today. So here's Braylon Gabus back in the gun. Two to the left, one to the right, one in the slot. He's got a single setback off to his line. He's going to hand the ball up. No, he's going to keep it himself. Braylon Gabus goes across the left side. Oh, and a nice play. takedown. And there comes a the flag. And you just wonder face if he didn't mask. get a face mask. It sure did look like it. And if that's the case, that's going to be a big 15-yard penalty. Let's wait and see what they call. Pack on the stop Did we get the a Redskins. Call? Yeah, that's, that's it. It was a face, yes, it was yeah, a a face, face mask. mask. Yep. So that will move them into the B&B &B Auto Repair Red Zone. That'll put it at the eight-yard line, Gilly. They'll go half the distance to the goal line. That'll go first and goal from the eight-yard line. So Salina with their first opportunity to put points on the board here. And they're not panicking. No, not at all. You not know, they're all. down 13 to nothing, and they're just, you know, ho humming their way right down the field. Yeah, and moving the ball against mm -hmm. a really good Wapakoneta defense. We talked about it earlier. Wapakoneta gives up <laughs> eight points a game. And uh, this is a stout defense. They only allow 97 yards a game rushing, Gilly. That's just, in high school football, that's unheard of. Well, and how'd they get the ball down the field? That that pass right there, miscommunication by Wapak, and that's where they've got themselves right there inside the 10. Gabus is in the gun. He's got a single set back off to his right. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to fake the ball or fake the handoff, yes. keep it himself. And a nice job there. You saw number 64 for the Redskins. Caden Ware. Caden Ware just submarined his man and came in and took Braylon Gabus out by the legs. Yes, sir. The 6 290-pound defensive end right there. Nice job right there getting in there, getting him below the knees, chopping him down. Gilly, this is where it gets tough against this walk against the Redskins. Not only are they big and strong, they're really athletic, and there's not a lot of space to operate down here. Well, like I said, flip a coin, offense and defense <laughs> right. on both teams. I mean, bo both defenses are exceptional. That'll bring up second and goal from the eight-yard line. The tight end. They'll go into the gun. Two receivers to the left. Gabus hands the ball off, and he is taken down. And Wapakoneta sniffed that out. Caden Ware takes John Lutz and throws him down. Caden Ware right now is the best player on the field, I'm Gilly. telling you, he's doing a heck of a job beating his man to the spot of attack. That'll bring up third and five from the 11. And I was wrong on the third or second goal. They can pick up a first down here, Gilly. Yeah, he's finding his way, slithering his way or around. Gabus is in the gun. He's got number nine, Parker Berkey, off to his right. He's got two receivers to the left. And we have another timeout. Our timeout sponsors tonight is the Side Rail. The Side Rail in Lampaconetta featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. 5.06 to go here in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after these messages. We're back here at Wapakoneta High School with 5.06 to go. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert, the Redskins lead 13 to nothing, but Salina is on the doorstep of the end zone trying to push it in on third and five from the 11-yard line. Gabus is in the gun. He's got Berkey off to his left. He's got a man in motion. He'll keep it himself. He'll go up the middle, and he is just taken down and nothing right there. There you see the defensive line of Wapak, and that's going to bring up a huge fourth down. Gilly, what do they do? Truesdale on the stop. Wyatt Buell on the stop. 
I think they're going to try to get three points here, Gilly. I think you got to try to come away with some form of points here, partner. Yeah, I think you're right. He's got the leg to do it. This is Zach Graber, the 5'9", 155-pound senior. He is an excellent kicker. So this remember, is, last, remember last week he got one blocked. You're right. This is a 27-yarder. 27-yard attempt here with 4.40 to go. Bobby Morris, the quarterback, will hold for the snap. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Zach Graber puts the Salina Bulldogs on the board with 4.33 to go. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Salina Bulldogs 13 to three. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, where with 4.33 to go until halftime, the Salina Bulldogs are on the board with a 27-yard field goal by Zach Graber. The senior knocks it through nice and clean, and he makes it 13-3, to so a good drive, Gilly. They absolutely needed that before halftime. They needed points, like you just said. They needed to come out with something and something positive, and they got three. They trimmed it down to 10 points. Well, now they got to get a stop defensively here and try to get the football back. And that'll go through the end zone. Gilly, you look on the sidelines, the Salina kids, there's a renewed enthusiasm over there. They're hang they got their helmets off, they're cheering, their heads are not hanging. So absolutely a much needed drive by the Salina, Salina Bulldogs. You know, it's one of these situations right here, you know, four minutes to go. They can get a stop here and get the football back playing with the confidence level that they are right now, maybe they could possibly come out with some more points if they get it back, because that second half, who's gonna get the football? Absolutely. The skins. That's right, Wapakoneta does get the second half kickoff. So 4.33 to go. Wapakoneta would like to have a four minute and 32 second drive here, Gilly, to end this first half. Caleb Moyer's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. Jason Nouse is the only tailback, and there's a timeout. It looks like Salina is going to take a timeout. Timeout on the field. Our timeout sponsor is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Gilly, we're going to keep it right here. We look around the rest of Northwest Ohio. There's championships on the line oh. everywhere. You look at the MAC, Coldwater, Marion Local. You look at uh, the Toledo City League, Lima Senior vying for a, a league title. Uh, the Western Buckeye League here, this one's for a league title. BBC. N NWC, BBC. NWC, BBC. Columbus, BBC. Grove, and Bluffton. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Yeah, you got a team playing Minster and Versailles, playing the nine. They're playing for third place <laughs> two really good teams two really league. good teams that's, that's going to make a playoff run that's what i told everybody when i saw the assignments for these this week and i saw you and i had this game i jumped for joy because oh, this is a great opportunity to watch great high school football and i'm so honored to get a call this for wsn absolutely and you know what we're sitting in a fabulous facility <laughs> right. and the food was good and you know, special thanks to Scott Minnick, the principal, Brad Rex, athletic director, both football coaches for getting us the stats and the information along with our buddy Mark Shine. It makes our job easy. It makes it a lot easier. So here come the skins with 4.33 to go. Caleb Moyer's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to now. So he's going to keep it and throw off to the right. He's got a man. He's at the 35, to the 40, to the midfield. And that's where he'll be taken down. Grant Jolly, and he hits him on a slant. Grant Jolly looked like he got shot out of a gun. Well, I was more impressed with how quick that ball got out there. I mean, he didn't mess around with it. When he, when he threw it, he threw a dime, and he spun it. That's a heck of a throw and, it looked and a like, heck of a run. Yeah, it looked like the, the, the fake was so good to Nouse that it caught me off guard, and then the quick throw out to Grant Jolly, and Grant Jolly just took off. Well, if you're sitting there and you're one of the, the front seven guys, what are you going to think? I mean, Nouse has got you for a chunk of change in this first half yardage-wise. Now they're going to give him the football. So here comes Nouse, and he's going to be stood up there, a gain of about a yard. Gilly, here's the thing, too. I, I like you, and like a lot of people sitting here, thought that Wapakoneta was going to run the ball, mm -hmm. run the clock down. But no, Travis Moyer, being a crafty coach as he is, fires a strike out there, and they get a huge pickup. They're, they're, they want to score again. Well, and the best thing about the throw was he didn't mess around. I mean, it was there, and boom, Jolly got it, and he was – chunking as many yards as he could right there. Yeah, you look at Caleb Moyer on the year, he's thrown for 
excuse me, he's one eight, or excuse me, one eighty-one of one forty-eight, ten touchdowns. Uh, the sophomore quarterback. Uh, we've talked about him all night, <laughs> athletic-wise. He is he's fantastic. Well, I watched him towards the end here in basketball. And didn't get a whole lot of reps in varsity basketball, and he came in and just did a phenomenal job and got the player of the game because of his ability to rebound the basketball and and just run the floor and do the little things. There you see Jace Nows goes off the left side and picks up about nine yards. That's how athletic the young man is. And there, there again, there's Nows, you know, churning nine more. Got to bring up third and two from the 40. Clock continues to run. We're down to 3.05. Wapakoneta leads 13-3. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Jace Naus off to his left. He's got two to the right. He's going to go to Naus. Naus off the right side, tries to curl back to the middle. He'll pick up maybe three yards, and he'll be close to another frost roofing first down. And it is a frost roofing first down. Frost roofing family owned and operated for over 95 years. Join the frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer called 419-739-ROOF. He knew exactly where that first down marker was because he turned it up and got the football extended as much as he could to get that first down. Thompson on the stop. We hope Mr. Lehman's okay on the other side. Warriors gonna throw back to the middle. He's got Jolly, he spins away from one tackle. He gets to the 15, he's to the 10, tries to get to the pylon, and he's gonna be taken out of bounds right about the goal line. Grant, the exact same play they ran. No, they're gonna call it a touchdown, Gilly. He they're must have got to the pylon. He must, he must have extended the ball, and we're gonna have to see that on replay, but he must have extended the ball and got another Binkley Real Estate touchdown. Well, watch him on replay. The most impressive thing was and fundamental was his ability to switch the ball from left hand, left right. arm to right arm and use that stiff arm. Not only did he do it once, he did it twice to get the defender off of him. That'll bring up Kyle Beach for a Pantry Pride extra point. Pantry Pride is our extra point sponsor. So Beach will attempt the extra point. Kick, the snap is back, the hold is good, and the kick is good. So with 2.17 to go until halftime, the Wapakoneta Redskins don't sit quietly. They march down for another touchdown, and they take a 20-3 lead. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School with 2.17 to go. The Wapakoneta Redskins tack on another touchdown. Gilly, two plays, the same plays, netted huge yardage for the Redskins. Yeah, uh, that's one of those where it's eye contact between father and son. <laughs> and <laughs> I, got between, a, I got a good matchup, Dad. Between son and wide receiver. <laughs> and So here's Kyle Beach as he attempts to kick it long and into the end zone. They, they got it once, let's try it again. That ball goes about seven yards deep into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. So with 2.17 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 20 to three. Gilly, I, I'll be honest with you, we were talking with some of the folks here in the booth before the game, and all of us said the same thing. As good as these teams are defensively, we don't look for either team to score maybe 17 points, and here we are, Wapakoneta's got 20, and we are not even over half. I'm, I'm shocked, but then again, They've been on a roll offensively. <laughs> they, they have been absolutely on a roll. And that's no disrespect to Salina. No, Salina. Hey, Salina's still in this ball game, down 20-3. So here comes Salina. They'll go out of the gun. They'll hand the ball off. This is Parker Berkey, and he was hit hard by number 57, Jaden Rampiola. That'll bring up Pack on the stop. Second and eight from the 22. Bobby Morris back in the game at the quarterback position. He's in the gun. He's got Parker Berkey off to his right. He's got a single receiver clear out on the left side. Morris is going to go Berkey off to the left side. Berkey's going to pick up a nice gain, and that'll be a frost roofing first down. So Parker Berkey with a nice run of about 11 yards, and they like that play. They've ran it several times tonight. Truesdale on the stop. Clock continues to run with a minute 30. 
Yeah, I don't see Merlin at the left guard spot, partner, and that's a big yeah. hit for them. If, he, if that is him on the sideline, we can't make out the number. We believe that's him on crutches on the sideline. Morris is going to hand it off to Berkey. Berkey tries to cut it back to the middle, and he is met there in the hole by Joey Truesdale, and you know who's going to win that battle yep, most of the time. Yep, he's not going anywhere. Clock continues to run. We are down to one minute here. Redskins lead 20 to three. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School on senior night. They honored quite a few seniors tonight, Gilly, before the had game. Had the band. Had the band and uh, a lot of the fall athletes. So a nice job there by the Wapakoneta Athletic Department. Oh, what a high snap. Bobby Morris loses the ball. He's trying to find it, and it's going to be picked up by the Redskins. Oh, boy. And a huge turnover. A huge turnover. Number eight, Bryson Pack. Johnny on the spot, and that's big, Darren. Well, and that's one of those where he tried to pick it up. Then he went after it a second time and tried to land on it and squirted out from underneath him, and Johnny on the spot was number eight, Bryson Pack. And not only that, Gilly, 38 seconds to go. If Wapakoneta puts it into the end zone now, they get the ball coming out in yes. the second half. Yeah. So this is a huge possession for Salina's defense. Yeah, this is where Salina's really got to, you know, buckle down defensively and try to get something out of this and minimize the damage. Here's Moyer in the gun. He's got Nouse to the right side. He's going to roll right, looking for receivers downfield. He's under heavy pressure. He throws the ball, and he's got him in the corner of the end zone. And they're going to say it was no catch, and there's a flag down, and it looks like in the area of holding, it'll be against Wapakoneta. He had Grant Jolly in the corner of the end zone. He was wide open, Gilly. Yeah, he, he threw it just a little bit too late, didn't he? Yes, he did. But boy, only, he rifled it to <laughs> it's him. It's the only mistake that young man's made tonight. <laughs> He's played a great game leading this team. Yeah, Coach, why is he not on his lines? <laughs> <laughs> So they'll get number 54. That's Mason Ludwig, the 5'11", 225-pound sophomore, guilty of the hold. Yes, yeah, line is taking a hit really defensively with Merlin out, and I do not believe Lehman has come back either. Well, we talked about a little bit of momentum when they got the three on the board and uh, moved the ball quite a bit down the field, and just uh, mistakes here have really hurt the Bulldogs. Here's Moyer in the gun, back to the 35. They'll go Jason Nouse off the left, cuts it back. He's got a hole and taken down at about the 30-yard line. Clock continues to run, and looks like, or excuse me, Wapakoneta will take a timeout with 26 seconds to go. So the Redskins lead 20 to three, Gilly. Uh, here, here's the thing with, with a field goal kicker like Kyle Beach, you can really play it conservative because you know Beach is a weapon you can use. I don't think Coach Moore is going to do that. I think he's going to continue to go for the end zone. I think he's going to try to get a touchdown here and expand this thing. But then again, partner, you know what? You get the ball coming out, you get three here. Right. You know, Ackley on the stop right there on that last possession by the Bulldogs. Heck of a play right there because if he doesn't get Moyer, Moyer may break that thing to the end zone. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Every time I read that, partner, I get hungry. I get hungry, too. <laughs> and I drove right by it coming over here, and I looked, and the line was halfway around the corner. That place just pumps out the chicken. That's what I tell people all the time. We've got family from out of state, and they always talk oh, about coming Oh, remember back last – I mean, last – Last uh, spring, remember, we yep, went over there and they fed us. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I wonder why they have job. health problems. <laughs> it is fantastic fried chicken. I know, folks. We're <laughs> two old fat guys sitting here talking about chicken. <laughs> Speak for yourself, pal. <laughs> 26 seconds to go. Redskins lead 20 to 3. It'll be second and 18 from the 31. And Moyer's in the gun. He's got Jason Alice off to the right. He's going to go now off the right side. He gets to the 30, tries to get around the edge, looks for a block, and he'll be taken down at about the 20-yard line. So he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and they will take another timeout. That'll bring up second, or excuse me, third, and about 10. About, let's see, maybe a little more than that, maybe third and Boy. six. Now, I'm being facetious when I say this. What was he thinking bouncing the ball outside when yeah. he could have kept the thing in the middle of the field? Yeah, not really sure about that, but I'm Boy, sure he's he, heck of a play, man. He, I mean, he got ahead of steam up there and got quite a few yards. 
Don't forget at halftime, we'll have our halftime adjustments where Darren Gilbert will break down the first half. We'll talk about the must needs for both teams as we go into the third quarter. You think he's at 100 yards yet? No, now says I believe so. He, he had he had 40 on one uh, one possession. Got to be close. Got to be real close. We'll get some halftime stats here. We got the great Mark Allstotter from the Lyman News oh, up that's here behind right. us. Mark, he'll have everything. For oh us. yeah, yeah. I won't hold it against him because no, he's no, no. he's, he's a, a Steelers fellow, fan. Well, and he's a fo WBL foe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's a good man. He uh, friend of ours, and we have a lot of fun with Mark here in the booth. So. 19 seconds to go, so the Skins trying to add on to this lead as they lead 20 to 3. 19 seconds, third and eight from the 21. Looks like just the, curious. I'm just curious if they don't go to the big fella. Let's see well, what a big fella is, number 85. Got, yeah, they've got one timeout left, Gilly. So, and now Salina is going to take the timeout, and that will give Salina. Let's see. Right, so, Salina, oh, that's their final timeout of the half, Gilly. So they don't have a timeout, obviously, on defense right now with 19 seconds to go. I mean, They're my goodness, two tight ends. Ryan Sadler, six foot four, 200 pounds, pounds excuse me, Grant Hauser, six five, two and a quarter, only a junior. Our quarter sponsor tonight, Gilly, is the Cisco Funeral Home, dedicated to excellence in service, and they have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes are families serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Cisco Funeral Homes, the quarter sponsor for tonight's WBL showdown. So, partner, I see you're checking all those scores over there, intently looking at league matchups and championship games. We've got them everywhere. WSN is at. <laughs> I heard Mark Shine on our radio show today, and he talked about how they picked these games back in June, not knowing. And here we are covering three league championship Isn't games. Isn't that crazy? That's it is amazing. just amazing. But, you know, look, the fellas back in the, at the home, at the mothership, they're good at knowing who's going to be good. So 19 seconds to go. Wapakoneta huddles up. They're looking to add on to this score. And the unfortunate part is we can't get them all. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. That's right. Yep. So here comes Moyer in the gun. Jace Nouse is just off to his left. Grant Jolly to his left. He's also got Caden Page out there. They'll go Nouse up the right side, and not much of a gain there. And Wapakoneta will probably use their last time out here. And they'll let the clock run down to three seconds, and Kyle Beach will come on and try to give the Redskins a 23-3 lead. So it'll be about a 26-yarder partner as it is at the 16-yard line. We saw Kyle Beach tonight have a little trouble with the snap as he missed, excuse me, mixed an extra point. But I've also seen that young man kick 51, 52, 53 yarders on this very field. Sure. So, Gilly, we know Salinas had their troubles this half. We know they can be better. Uh, just two big missed opportunities with the turnovers. You know what else? This game is such a great preparation game for next week. Absolutely. Both these teams are locked into the playoffs. They're solidly locked in. I mean, obviously, Salina would like to win this tonight, possibly get first two round games at home. But... Uh, even a loss tonight. They're still in the playoffs. Probably going to get a first round game, not guaranteed a second. Where Wapak, not unsure, you know, possibly a first round. So here's Kyle Beach as he's attempting 27 yarder with three seconds to go. Bring up fourth and four. Goes to the right side and it is. Good, Kyle Beach knocks it through, and it is good. Could have been good from 50, Gilly. Yeah, he turned, you see the little body lean right there? He turned that one right over, right, right through the goal post. So after one half of play, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Salina Bulldogs 23-3. We'll have second half action right after these messages.
Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. We're at halftime here. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Salina Bulldogs 23 to three. Gilly, our halftime sponsor is, uh, excuse me, our halftime adjustment sponsor is brought to you by Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta. Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Gilly, we saw a little bit of life out of Salina there in the middle of the second quarter. They got three on the board. They were moving the ball down the field. What can they do to get back in this game in the second half? Well, I think they just got to take it one possession at a time, and it's all going to start right here because they've got to kick off and they've got to defend, and they can't ill afford to give up another three or seven points to the Redskins. Right now they're clicking on all cylinders and, you know, chip away at it. And, uh, you know, they've, they've had some very severe injuries this first half that's appeared on the defensive side of the ball. But that's no indication on why they're behind by 20. It's been execution on Wapak's part and following the game plan, both throwing the football with Moyer and also the ability of Mr. Naus and the offensive line controlling that line of scrimmage. And that brings me to my point about Wapakoneta's business as usual, Gilly. They're up 23 to three. Everything's working for them. They are controlling the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball. Do they make any changes? What do they do in the second half? They just got to continue to do what they got to do and get the football into Nouse's hands. And, you know, when you got Mr. Moyer at quarterback, make solid decisions fundamentally and put it on the, put it in the hands of your defense who's carried you, you know, throughout this first half and throughout this season. You know, Wapak is a team that, you know, been there, done that. How many league championships in a row did we see on the three big and board? Three in a row, yeah. Okay. In Salina, this is new territory to them. So, you know, regardless of the outcome, you know, both teams are going to move on until next week. But, you know, Salina's got to clean some things up. And it started with the miscue on the kicking game. And, you know, that, that right there gives a short field to Wapak. And Wapak went down and did what they were supposed to do. And, punched it in and then that led to what field goal 10 yes. to nothing and then then it was 10 to 3 and then two touchdowns by Wapak so Salinas they've got to get something going and it's got to start right here with the defensive side of the football create a turnover or create a uh, three and out situation and then take the thing down and get some points. And that is our Owls Woody's Diner halftime adjustments. I'm Danny Hobart alongside Darren Gilbert and we come back We'll have second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Just about underway here for the second half action. And Gilly, two fantastic bands out here at halftime. Did a great job. Oh, yeah. Not? Excellent show, you know, especially the... You know, when you look at Wapak being on what senior night, and they put yeah. on an Elvis, Elvis performance. Oh, they did. You're right. And it was awesome. It was shaking. That's for sure. Salina was very good too. Salina kicks off, and this is fielded right about the goal line. This is Nows. He brings it up to the 15. He's at the 20. He'll go across the 25, and that's where he'll be taking out of bounds about the 27-yard line. And that's where Caleb Moyer and the Redskins will take over as they lead 23 to three. Gilliard. Excuse me, our presenting sponsor tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. Our premier sponsor in Wapakoneta is Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. So, Gillian, something tells me they're going to run, run, run. Mr. Naus right, Mr. Naus left. <laughs> well, you know, they, Salinas, like I said, they've got to get a three and out. They're forced to turn over. Here comes Naus, and he is hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. That is our first call of the quarter. Wright State University is our sponsor. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Big stop there by Mr. Ackley from that middle linebacker position, dropping him for a yard loss. Tonight's third quarter sponsor is Cisco Funeral Homes, dedicated to excellence in service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes, our family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. That'll bring up second 11 from the 25. Skins lead 23 to three. Moyer's in the gun. He's gonna pitch the ball back to Jolly as he tries to get around the left side. And a great pursuit there 
by the Salina Bulldogs, number two, Xander Jones. And Gilly, two plays in a row. That defensive line for Salina really stepping up. Yeah, did a nice job right there, especially number four, Braylon Gavis with a little spin move to get away from his defender. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced the, the football outside for his teammate, Mr. Harris, to come up and make the tackle. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporters of Mercer County Athletics. So that'll bring him third and nine from the 27. Moyers in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. Jolly goes in motion. He's going to look across the middle. He's under heavy pressure. He rolls to the right. Still under pressure. Hit and avoids the tackle. Goes across midfield. And he's going to try to get a first down. He's getting blocks out front. Caleb Moyer. And there you saw the flag come down. And that's a block in the back, Gilly. No, I don't think it's a block in the back. I, here's, what I, here's what I believe it is. It's a blindside block. Blindside block. I think you're correct, Gilly. Yeah, if he would have just went up there with his hands up and made the contact, but it is a rule in the rule book. He laid a shoulder into the young man. It's good to see the young man pop up on the ground. And that was Braylon Gabus. Uh, you're right. It is a blind side block and that'll push the ball back and what what a scramble by Caleb Moyer oh, he what a run 45 yards to pick up a first down yeah that's one of those years ago and Gilly you were correct is a blind side block yeah, that's he, the right he got, call he got him with a shoulder he lowered the shoulder into him yeah. if he would have just went and stood there or rubbed him You'll the see, official yeah. wouldn't have threw it. You'll see that on our instant replay. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delta, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. You know, and in, in defense of Mr. Hauser on the blindside block, he didn't mean anything malicious by it. You know, he was trying no, to get his teammate to, yeah, free. Exactly. He was trying to free up Caleb Moyer. And, uh, look, when you get a quarterback who scrambles left, right, left, right, there's a whole lot of confusion going on. Right. You're looking to pick up a block. Absolutely. That'll bring up third and nine from the 27-yard line. Wapakin that continues to lead 23 to three. And you know, you know is exactly why that's brought into play with the severity of the the head injuries. Sure, sure. This is now as he goes off the left side, finds a hole, goes to the middle, and he is close to a first down. It's going to be about three yards short. And it'll bring up another Salina Bulldog going off oh, the field. Oh, boy, appears to be Ackley. Yeah, absolutely. Number 50 for the Salina Bulldogs, and that is Tucker Ackley. And they can ill afford to lose him, and he is going to go down. He's and, grabbing uh, his right knee, appears to be. And he is down. We've he, got an injury on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. We're watching high school football on WOSN. The injured player was Tucker Ackley, I believe that's who it was. Gilly, did we not identify the uh, injured player? Yeah, yeah, Tucker Ackley. Yeah, Tucker Ackley, and he goes off the field, hobbles off the field, but he did go, excuse me, did go off on his own accord. So Kyle Beach will be at the 20-yard line, punting the ball away, and uh, the receiver back for Salina is at the 30-yard line. So Beach gets a kick off, and it is a dandy as it rolls, hits at the 30. And it rolls across the 25 to about the 24-yard line. And the Wapakin and the coaching staff is just outraged about something, Gilly. Not real sure what happened there. They're asking that a flag be thrown. The officials are uh, getting together at midfield and talking about something. Did you see something happen? I don't know if they had too many players on the field. Not quite sure what the – I know they – I thought they were going to talk about it. Well, there's no call made, no flag thrown. So uh, the Wapakoneta coaches are saying maybe they jumped off sides. Coach Moyer's talking to the head linesman, uh, but they're not going to change anything, Gilly. <laughs> That'll make it first and 10 from the 24-yard line. There you see Kyle Beach. Not only can he kick it through the goalpost, what a weapon as a punter, too. Yep. Yeah, that kid's going to find his way somewhere to at the next level he continues to do what to do what he's doing they'll go Berkey to the right side as he tries to find some space and he's taken out of bounds gain of about three yards Truesdale Joey Truesdale 
He is a prototypical linebacker, and I mean that in the best way. That young man loves to play the middle, and he can hit you hard. Mullen coming up, making the stop. Braylon Davis gets the call from the sidelines. Bring up second and eight from the 26. 8.48 to go. Danny Holmberg, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School on senior night. Wapakoneta trying to get a piece of the WBL title. Gabus is in the gun. He'll take the snap. He'll keep it himself. Goes off the left side trying to follow his blockers. He'll go back to the middle and a nice big gain and another frost roofing first down. And there you saw Braylon Gabus picks up a nice gain of about 25 yards. Well, not only did he get a nice gain there, boy, he exploded. He was going to bounce it outside and made a quick cutback and just picked up a head of steam and got the first down. Heck of a run right there. Finally brought down by Jaden Rampula. Jaden Rampula, we've called him quite a few times tonight. Gilly, I, I've said it before, I, I don't know that there's a more physical team in this part of Northwest Ohio than the Wapakoneta Redskins. They've just got some kids that know how to hit and they're fundamentally sound and do a great job. Oh, absolutely. So here come the Bulldogs. Bobby Morris keeps it himself as he goes off the left side. Hit, bounces off the tackle, and he picks up another five yards. And a nice job by Bobby Morris of getting the ball to the 50-yard line. Metzger on the stop at the boundary. Metzger knocks him out of bounds. You know, unfortunately, Jolly had him in the backfield, but just couldn't wrap him up. And that'll bring it to the 48-yard line. Morris comes back in at the quarterback position. We haven't seen a lot of Bobby Morris tonight. Uh, Braylon Gabus has ran the multitude of offensive sets. You know, they got what they wanted. They got to stop. Now they got to get some points. You know what I'm saying? They've got to trim into this 20-point deficit. Morris throws off to the right side. He's got a man out there to the right. Goes across midfield. Cuts it back to the middle to the 45. And he's still on his feet. He gets down to the 40, and there's a flag coming out. There's two flags. Two flags coming out. We'll see what happens here. But the receiver, number four, Braylon Gavis. Nice run by that young man. Let's see what the flags are. Salina desperately needing to get back in this game down 23 to three. The officials huddling together to sort this one out. They're gonna, I think they're gonna call it against Wapakoneta. They're gonna say a face mask. Is that what they're saying? We'll, we'll get the call here. Yep. It is a face mask on Wapakoneta. And they're saying it was a five-yard penalty. That'll push the ball to about the 30, 34-yard line. Yeah, they didn't. Did they signal personal foul or? Did they no, just, they just said okay. So it's unintentional. Inadvertent, yeah, inadvertent, okay. unintentional. However you want to call it. That'll bring up first and ten. That is another frost roofing first down. Braylon gave us. Excuse me, Bobby Morris back in the gun. Hand the ball off to Parker Berkey. Cuts back to the middle and a nice gain there. Parker Berkey still on his feet and he's gonna pick up a nice gain of about 12 yards and it's another frost roofing first down. So here come the Salina Bulldogs. What a big cut back by the young man. Got the shoulder square. Took that thing north and south. Got as many yards as he could. Ran through the tackle of Truesdale. Big, big play there, brought down by number 20, Ryan Richardson. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 20 yard, 21 yard line. Bobby Morris in the gun. Berkey off to his left. He's gonna fake the handoff. Morris looks deep down the right side. He's got a man in the end zone and he overshoots him and intended target number eight. Carter Allstotter, the six foot 195 pound senior, just misses that one. Well, and he threw it in the position. If he's going to miss it, you got to miss it long because if you underthrow it, you run into a huge, you know, chance of it being intercepted. So, threw a nice ball there, just threw it over his attended receiver. Danny Holmberg, Darren Gilbert on week 10, Gilly, of the high school football season. Boy, man, this season went fast, did it not? Oh. <laughs> we blinked. Two we're... weeks, two weeks from November. <laughs> it's crazy. It is really, really a quick season. So here come the Bulldogs, second and 10 from the 21. Bobby Morris throws off to his left. He's got Gabus out there in the 15. He gets to the 10, tries to go to the five, and he'll make it up to about the seven yard line where he'll be stopped short of the goal line. And Salina wants a late hit, but I believe it was just uh, a lot of guys on the pile, and they kind of fell over on top of him. 
Well, I'll tell you, that's a great execution by Salina right there, throwing the ball out into the flat. And that'll bring up another frost roofing first down. Bring up first and goal from the nine yard line. So here comes Salina knocking at the door. Gilly, if they can put it in, they'll be down two scores with plenty of time left. Yeah, just chipping away, aren't they? Chipping away, one one possession at a time. You know, and this is where, you know, your Wapak, you got to feast on what you do best, and that's, you know, stop the run, make them throw the football. So looks like Salina is going to take a timeout. Our timeout sponsor tonight is the Side Rail, the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Our premier sponsor for Wapak and that is tonight is Al's Woody's Diner. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. First and goal from the eight, Gilly. Braylon Gavis back in quarterback. He'll take the hand or take the ball himself. He'll go off the left side, being pursued by Joey Tuesdale. He gets across the not the four yard line, maybe the three yard line. That'll bring up second and goal for the Bulldogs. Good job by Walpock stringing it out right there, letting the linebackers come up and make the stop. Ware and Truesdale on the stop for the Redskins. <laughs> Wait, Ware has played a heck of a game mm -hmm. tonight. Him Gilly. and Truesdale both. Second and goal from the five-yard line. Bobby Morris back in the quarterback position. He's going to throw across the middle. The ball's deflected, and it's picked off. Picked off at the goal line. The ball was deflected, and it was picked off. We're going to have to find out who picked it off as we cannot see the numbers because it's I such I think a it was Bryson Pack off the deflection. I think you're right. I believe you're right. Number Bryson Pack, what a turn of events, Gilly. Salina right on the doorstep of trying to close this to a two-possession score and an interception. And look, Bobby Morris has had those troubles this year. He's thrown five on the year, but that one really not his fault. No, that one, you know, the slant was there. They went to a quick slant, and he beat his defender to the inside. The ball was thrown, but give a lot of credit. I'm, you know, I'm not sure, but on the replay, you're probably going to be able to identify who got their big paw up there to deflect that thing for the Redskins. And, Gilly, that's the third Salina turnover tonight. It seems like they come at just such inopportune time. Moyer's going to keep it himself to give the Redskins a little bit of running room there. Takes it to about the four-yard line. That'll bring up second and six from the four-yard line. And obviously right now, Wapakoneta back up against their own goal line. They want to keep that clock running, but they also want to churn out those yards. Yeah, they can't afford to turn a thing over right here. You know, they've got to maintain their composure, get it out from the end zone. And if they do have to punt it, you certainly don't want your punter all the way back here by the, the back line. Second and eight from the three yard line. They'll go Jace Nouse off the right side. He finds a hole, and he'll get about four yards. Allstetter on the stop along with Braylon Gabus. Gabus. Excuse, Excuse me. me. That was number 35, Reese Schnari. Yeah, so Schnari with the carry there, giving uh, Jace Nouse a little bit of a break there. That'll bring up third and three, and a big third down here. for. Look, Gilly, if Solana can hold right here and get a punt, you're going to get the ball at midfield, mm -hmm. and really nobody hurt on the possession because the clock has not ran a lot off right now. So this is a big play for Solana Sure right it now. is. Yep, I totally agree because you come away with no points that last possession. Mauer's under the center. He's going to hand it off to Nows. He goes off the right side. He's going to pick up a frost roofing first down. And there you see Jace Nows and a really nice conceived play there as he follows these blockers for another frost roofing first down. Thompson and Gabus on the stop. Braylon Gabus. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And not a lot of Wabash telephone scoring on the guest side as they're down 23 to three. Just missed a perfect opportunity to put some points on the board and another turnover by the Salina Bulldogs. Salina's got three turnovers tonight, Gilly, Wapakoneta, none. That's the story of the game. Well, and I'm looking defensively now at Salina. 
They're playing backup linebackers as it appears that Ackley has not returned. Here goes Schnari as he just turns up the yards and a flag comes in after the play. That may be a, play, a face mask under the pile. And Reese Schnari has another frost roofing first down. Let's see what the play is. The officials are pointing towards Wapakoneta. They're going to say two fouls come in, a face mask and a hold, one on each of the teams. Let's see what they do here. Boy, Schnari runs hard too, doesn't he? He, he just like really now, hard. both of those kids run exceptionally hard. Let's see what the decision is here. Schnari coming in at 5'11", 185, and Mr. Naus, let's take a look at him, 5'11", wow, 210. I know he's a heck of a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, that's going to back it up to, let's see. So there was only one foul. We were under the understanding there was two fouls on the play, but it looks like they're going to say Wabakaneta, I believe, is guilty of holding. We'll wait for the call here. I think that's already what they've give, I believe. Now walking forward 15. On the offense, number 69, 10-yard yeah, that's what they're saying, holding against Wapakoneta. Now. Push the ball back. Everybody here in the booth is talking about the second flag. We all saw it come in, and it was in a different proximity to where the hold was called. Here's Jace Nows off the right side. He's got a block out there. He goes across the 15-yard line. That'll bring up second down. Boy, nice that's open field tackle right there by... Braylon Gabus. Gilly, that's a two-headed monster with oh. Reese Shinari and Chase Naus. And look, they're both nimble enough that they can get around the edge and they've got speed, but they're really physical backs. And what have we seen? Moyer run one time and he ran 45 yards <laughs> to get yeah. what? Five or ten, and then I think there, there was, was a penalty. penalty. Yeah, there was a penalty. My goodness. A relatively clean game so far tonight. It really has been. Both ball clubs. That'll bring him second and 15 from the 15-yard line. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to throw off to the left side. He's got Grant Jolly out there, and he's got a blocker. He goes across the 25, and that's where he'll be tripped up. And, he, and here's the thing. It was second and 15, Gilly. They put him in a manageable third down position here with 3.20 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, they got the ball out to the athlete, let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Braylon gave us on the stop right there. Nice open field tackle by that young man. He's going to have double digits and tackles tonight. And Gabus was being held off, and he did a great job of defending the block and making the tackle. Well, and here's the other thing. I mean, it's got to be taking its toll on Salina defensively. A lot of them starting to put their hands on their hips and their knees, and a lot of these kids are going two ways, and it's just Wapak's wearing them down. Come on, guys, you gotta call Bring up that. third and four from the 26-yard line. And it looks like Wapaknet is gonna take a timeout. So with 2.43 to go, the Wapaknet Redskins lead 23 to three. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School with 2.43 to go. The Redskins lead 23 to three. A big third down here, third and four from the 26 yard line. As the Skins try to continue this drive, try to put away the Bulldogs here. Moyer's in the gun. He's gonna go Jace Nouse off the left side. And Nouse is gonna be close and he did get the first down. Another frost roofing first down, Gilly. And boy, every time they need a big run, Jace Nouse provides the insurance. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's the one that wants the football. He's not going to turn the thing over. And if you're going to take it from him, you've got to work for it because he's just not going to put it on the ground. He really secures it and gets his shoulder square, protects it, and nice run there by that young man. Tonight's timeout sponsors is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, portions and specialty drinks. The side rail is our timeout sponsor. Here's Moyer, he's gonna keep it himself as he goes across the right side, cuts back to the middle, and is taken down at about the 39 yard line. A nice pickup of about seven yards for Caleb Moyer. Boy, when he runs, Gilly, he, he's really effective with his nimble feet. He, he just knows how to read a ball. Light on his feet, wasn't he? He sure is. Bang, bang, I mean, he went side to side real quick. 
You know, I had him in a uh, basketball game last year as a freshman, and he came into a varsity contest, and he didn't score a lot of points, but I thought he was the player of the game but just by the stuff he did, the rebounding, the mm -hmm. defense, the loose balls. He's a really good athlete. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they wanted to bring him along slow in basketball because that was discussed. We had a discussion with the coach, and that was one of the things they wanted to do. They didn't want to rush him along. And there you see Jace Niles pick up another frost roofing first down, a gain of about 12 yards. And he just, he's so low to the ground, Jace Niles is, and he is really effective when it comes to hanging out behind those offensive linemen and looking for those holes. Thompson on the stop along with Braylon Gibbs. I'll tell you, Thompson's come off the bench and played for uh, Layman's, had a real solid game for the Bulldogs. So we are at the one minute mark here in the third quarter. Wapakoneta obviously taking their time. Play clock down to five seconds. Caleb Moyer in the gun and he snaps it at one second to go in the play clock. Here comes Moyer, he goes across the 50 to the 45, gets to the 40 and he's thrown out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. Gilly, he is really effective at managing this offense. He ran that play clock down to one second, taking every second off the clock. Yeah, he probably picked the football up at about the age of four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And dad started talking to him about mm -hmm. defensive schemes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, holds, you know, how to hold it and how to spin it. Had to bring up another Frost Roofing first down. So Frost Roofing getting a lot of sponsorship tonight for a lot of first downs by the Wapakoneta Redskins. Braylon gave his forced him out at the boundary, but not until he got to the 37. I bring up first and 10 from the 37. Mm -hmm. Caleb Moyer goes under center, hands it off to Jace Niles, goes to the 30, gets a hole, and he just about broke it. And if it wouldn't have been for a nice saving tackle by Caleb, Caleb Gabes, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and he's coming up a little gimpy right there. Yeah, Caleb Gabus with the shoestring tackle there, or Moyer would have been, or excuse me, Nels would have been gone. And they will not run another play. So after three quarters of play from Wapakoneta High School, the Wapakoneta Redskins are one quarter away from being co-champions in the Western Buckeye League as they lead 23 to three. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after these messages. Back here at Wapakoneta High School, Gilly, and uh, a fantastic light show by the Wapakoneta School District here. They got lights flashing everywhere, and uh, the, the uh, PA announcer just made the uh, announcement heading into the fourth quarter with one more quarter to go until a league championship. So everybody on their feet now as they uh, anticipate tying for a league title. Salina trying to avoid that. I mean, can you imagine an opponent coming in here and playing on this as a neutral field for a playoff game and you know, with the facilities, it's here. And then when you score a touchdown, Gilly, he's ever in the press box, yeah. flashes them lights. And you saw the pregame festivities with the scoreboard here, this million-dollar scoreboard. Oh, it's and unbelievable. I, I wanted to go play football after that speech. They they do an incredible job of getting this place pumped up and uh, a full house tonight here as Wapakoneta leads 23-3. to Yeah, they did it right. They sure did. That'll bring up second and one from the 28. Moyer's in the gun. He looks to throw. Pump fakes. Goes got to right side. He's got Jolly at the 25 to the 20 to the 15. And Jolly's taking down to the 14 as he goes into the B&B Auto Repair Red Zone. B&B Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. There you saw the elusiveness of Grant Jolly. Well, they wanted to go to the stop and go route and go deep. And what a great job by the young Moyer looking off there and throwing the ball out into the flat to Jolly. And he scampered down this near sideline, got it all the way down to about, what, the 13. Yeah. Our first quarter sponsor, excuse me, our first call of the quarter, whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 13. They'll go... Schneery up the middle, picks up about three yards. Our fourth quarter sponsor tonight is the Cisco Funeral Homes, dedicated to excellence in service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes, our family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Ian Mullins on the stop. 
from the linebacker spot to 5'11 sophomore. Partner, you know, you do a good job of keeping track of those uh, defensive players, and people at home don't know you're responsible for the defensive calls, and I'm calling the offense, and uh, it's, it's not easy at times. No, but it works out good. <laughs> it you know? sure does. It sure does. <laughs> nice to see that young man get his name called tonight. Back up linebacker. Oh, we make an yeah, encroachment. We a, yeah, we got an encroachment on Salina. That'll push it up five yards. You saw Caleb Moyer just walk away from the line of scrimmage because he knew the call was coming. That'll put it at about the four-yard line. Yeah, I think it come from this near side end position. Got just a little bit antsy. That's the first time Moyer, I think, is Denicaden's call tonight. and He happened to pick the right time and got Salina. Leaning forward. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the People's Bank. We are investing in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. And our premier sponsor for Wapakoneta, Al's Woody's Diner on Wapak, is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. So here we go. Gilly second and one from the four. Moyers under center. He's got Schneer and Naus in the backfield with him. He'll take his time and run the play clock down to four seconds. He'll go Jace now. It's off the right side, cuts back, and he takes it in for another Binkley Real Estate touchdown. Jace now walks into the end zone, and he gives the Redskins the 29-3 lead. You know what? He went in untouched, and that is all a tribute to the offensive lineman opening up those huge holes right there, letting him find his way to the end zone. Binkley Real Estate is our touchdown sponsor. They have an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, an extensive network that will get you the results that move you. And here comes Kyle Beach on for the extra point. It is up and it is good. The Pantry Pride extra point. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. With 9.59 to go in the game, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 30 to three. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, where with 9.59 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins tack on another seven points, and they up the ante to 30-3, to three, Gilly. Not what I expected tonight, an offensive explosion from the Wapakoneta Redskins. It's not what we expected, however. The ball club is down 30-3. to three. We keep forgetting they come into this game undefeated in the league. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they're still going to get a piece of the pie of the action as far as the league championship even if the score doesn't change. But here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for the kids that are dinged up that they get an opportunity to play in the playoff sure. game next week because they've worked so hard to put themselves in this position. It's unfortunate that they went out. That's part of the game, uh, injuries and such. But hopefully they can get a speedy recovery and get healed up this week and with doctor's permission and, and trainer's permission get them out there next week for their postseason game. I'm gonna bring up first and 10 from the 20, 9.59 to go. Bobby Morris in the shotgun. He's gonna hand the ball off to Parker Berkey off the right side, a gain of about two yards. <laughs> Gilly, it's 30 to three, and that defensive line for Wapak acts like it's tied up at seven. They are just chomping at the bit to get to the ball carriers. Sure are, Nick. Nice tackle right there, trying to see who that was. Appeared to be number 68, Kyle Holzkamp. Well, Gilly, we look at Wapakoneta's schedule this year. They started out 0-2. They lose the game to Marion Local that they had the lead in. They come back the following week, and we talked to one of the guys here in the booth, one of the officials from Wapakoneta, he said almost like a hangover. They lose that second game. And Stub they, your toe. Yeah, and then they come out and they rattle them off, and they haven't lost since. And really, really a dominant program right now. This is Bobby Morris off the right side. He'll be taken out of bounds. You look at Salina, they lose the first game of the year, and they have not lost since Gilly, and they have been dominant. We had them last week against a good Defiance team, and they really dominated, they dominated that game, win 17 to nothing. They did. They, you know, they dominated on both sides of the football, and you know, coming into this game, we thought it was going to be a defensive battle too, but you know what? Give Walpock a lot, a lot of credit for their game plan, offensive execution, and separation. Unfortunately, the turnovers was the bugaboo tonight for Salina. And you turn the football over in a game like this with an offense that 
you know, scores a lot of points, it could come back to bite you, and I think that's what happened to the Bulldogs tonight. Braylon Gabus with the carry there. Tackle made by Reese Schnari there. And right now, I think you said it best, Salina just looks tired right now. They've, you know, down 30 to three. It's gotta be tough for those young men, but uh, they'll bounce back. They'll have a playoff game next week and uh, we'll see what they're made of. So here's Bobby Morris. He's in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's got one to the right. He's gonna hand the ball off to the right side. Looks for an opening and cut it back to the middle. Carry by Harris, excuse me, Carver Harris, number five. A nice run. 70 pound senior. Nice run. Metzger with the tackle, got him by the ankles, but not until he got nine yards. So there we see Carver Harris with his first carry of the night. That young man gets in the books. He, we remember last week we had a little trouble with Carver Harris's name. We, uh, well, I screwed it up and you reminded me I screwed it up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it's second and one from the 41. Bobby Morris in the gun. He'll hand the ball off. And he'll be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. And there he is. Xander Jones is just met by Joey Truesdale. And he's just thrown well, to the I think ground. it was Rampula, actually. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Jaden Rampula, you are correct. That's two TFLs that young man's had. Remember, he ran, down, ran him down for a sack in the first half, too, over there on the far side in the first half. Let it bring up third and four from the 38. The Bulldogs looking for any sign of life here with 7.20 to go in the game, down 30 to three. Bobby Morris takes the snap, looks across the middle. He's under pressure. He steps up. He throws deep down the middle, and he overshoots everybody, and he misses his intended target. Number two, Xander Jones, almost picked off there by the defensive backfield there. Well, you're watching the flight of the ball, and I was watching number five, Mr. Metzger, come from his defensive back position with a head of steam coming right at the quarterback. And thank goodness somebody chip blocked him because I'll tell you what, he was on a beeline for the quarterback. That'll bring up fourth and four from the 38. Salina's going to go for it here. Uh, I, not, I don't see any other alternative here. Gilly on the 38-yard line, down 30-3, to three, trying to make something happen. Looks like they're going to run that play clock down, and they will take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 7-11 to go. Wapakoneta well, leads 30 to 3. We're back here at Wapakoneta High School with 7-11 to go. The Redskins lead 30 to 3. A a we, we called it a defensive struggle when the game began. We thought we wouldn't see a lot of points, but Wapakoneta with an offensive explosion here and helped by three turnovers here by Salina. Salina decides not to go for it on fourth down. At the 38, they'll punt the ball. Fair catch made at about the 32-yard line by Grant Jolly. You know, looking to next week, you know, just talking to some administrators from here at Wapak, they seem to think with this win tonight that this could push them to, I thought he said fifth. Fifth? Then, yeah. So that guarantees one home game. And it's going to push Salina, and who's push second Salina right now, down to six. To six, yeah. and they're still going to have a home game. So they get the opportunity, both both schools, to at least host an opening round and contest. And the official we talked to said he looked and projected who they could possibly play, and he thinks if Wapak gets a home win that they would travel to Trotwood Madison, and we know the difficulties Wapak has had with Trotwood Madison. Well, that's a heck of a facility down there, too. It's a t heck of a place to find, but it's a nice facility. Well, look. That would be round two, correct? Yeah, that would be round two. And I'm telling you, this Wapakoneta team, I, I would not want to play them right now. I don't care how good you are, what your athlete situation is, what you have. This Wapakoneta team is on a mission right yep. now, Gilly. They're on a and, mission. Uh, they're playing as well as I've seen them play in the last few years. It, you know, it starts, it starts with the defense, and they're doing their job defensively, and the offense is starting to click on all cylinders, and they appear to be healthy. Now will go around the right side, looks for a block out there. Goes to the 50, 
No, this is number 22, excuse me. Yeah, that's Mullen, Jared Mullen. Another and flag we may comes get in. A, we may get a face mask. Jared Mullen, the 5'7", 160 pound sophomore. Boy, he was really moving around that right side, Gil. Sure did, got a face mask. Face mask against Salina. I can tell that walk by the official anywhere. That is Mr. Jeff Keckler over here on this near side. <laughs> That'll be a five yard penalty for face mask. He's not kidding me. He's got the gloves on and the <laughs> up around his neck. He's cold out there tonight, Gilly. It's a little chilly out there. Boy, they served the food to us tonight, oh, didn't they? Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Shredded chicken sandwiches. Pizza. Pizza. Soda. All yep. kinds of stuff. That'll bring up yeah. first and 10 from the 43. Yeah, another. thanks thanks again to Walpaw oh, and their hospitality. Brad, Brad Rex, Rex and Scott over Minnie, here. Yep. You know, Tom Hunter, first all, class. These, all these people over here. First class. Moyer will go under center. No, we've got a new quarterback now. They'll bring in number 14, Kagan Zink, the 5'11 sophomore. So Wapak and then trying to get some uh, reserves in, get some quality playing time. And they've got all reserves in now. So starters get to take a rest and get a nice supply from the home both, crowd. both ball clubs have went to second string. You know, players get them some opportunities. You know, special thanks to Travis Moyer here at Wapak and also Coach Brennan Bader of Salina, both of those coaches, you know, for getting us the information along with Mark Shine, one of our cohorts at WOSN, makes our <laughs> job so much easier and Absolutely. To, to broadcast the contest. So here's a carry, he goes across the left side. Number 30 on the carry, Noah Bishop, 5'6", sophomore. Clock continues to run with 4.54 to go. So, Gilly, if you're Salina, you, you, you get extensive, you know, ex basically you get blown out here. Wapakana, no shame in that. This is a solid deal. What do you tell your kids heading into round one of the playoffs? Do you just put this one behind you? I think you enjoy tonight. You, you ride on the bus back. You're a WBL champion. So what? It's a co-championship. The first one since 1995. Give them tomorrow off. Br you know, have something light tomorrow. And then, you know, find out, who, you know, let the chips fall on who you may play next week and, and try to get those bodies healed up as quickly as you can. Regroup your troops. You know what? You're not going to have to motivate those kids no, to play next right. week. No, you're right. And, you know, we know being over there last week how much the Salina faithful support their Bulldogs. Sure. And they're going to come out in full force just like the Redskins will next week. So, that's all part of high school football. You, you know what? They're not going to have to to motivate them. They got to clean some things up, and I know, you know, coach and his staff is going to talk about that. But uh, as far as getting them ready to play, you won't have to you won't have to say a whole lot. Just clean some things up and and, and play the game. This is Bishop as he goes around the right side. The previous ball carrier was Andre Longsworth. We'll try to get all these young men's name in there as they deserve recognition. Wesley Graber on the stop along with Kobe Thompson. That'll be a turnover on downs. Bring up first and 10 from the 35. Salina also emptying their bench, bringing in some reserves. They'll bring out number 12. It looks like Cohen Harder will quarterback the uh, Bulldogs here. Harder is sophomore, 5'8", 140. He'll go in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to number 32. And he is taken down. Number 32, Noah Talmadge, 5'7", so freshman. Ryan Walter on the stop, the junior, six foot 180. Clock continues to run at 310 and counting. Wapakana leads 30 to three. Got him a tackle for loss of about three right there by that young man. So it's time now, Gilly, we might as well bring it up. Uh, four WBL titles in a row, albeit they share this one. I'm telling you, Coach Moyer is as good as there is in the area, and this is an outstanding program with outstanding facilities. Yeah, he. what a great hire to bring him in from Winford. And, 
you know, the kids buying into what's going on and and the community support. It's obvious with the facility they have. And, uh, you know, they've come close into the playoffs, and I know he wants to take the next step and get over that hurdle. And that's that all starts next week. And, you know, Coach Bader, he's got his team going the next week. And uh, I'm sure both of these ball clubs, coaches and Fans and players are all excited come Sunday to see who they're going to play. Actually, they're probably going to know tomorrow with Joe Weidel and the job he does. He, if they get on there tonight at midnight, they're probably going to see it on there at midnight tonight. <laughs> You're right. You're probably right with a great job Joe Weidel does. Go, you look over at that student section and a lot of kids out here and they're cheering all night. And the crowd, the home crowd on their feet. And uh, how could you not want to play football in a community like this with, with the way things are around here? It's just fantastic. You know, being a WBL fellow, you know, Absolutely. player, I, you know, I've got tons of respect for the WBL as well as I do the other conferences. But uh, like you said, not a lot of Salina folks have left the student section. There's still quite a few in there. Absolutely. Same thing with uh, Wapal Canetta. It's great to see. That'll bring up a fourth down here, fourth and eight from the 37. And they will take another timeout. Our timeout sponsor tonight is the side rail in Wapakoneta. Featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Gilly, we got a big one down in Columbus tomorrow. The Nittany Lions come into Columbus. And What's your take on the biggest game in the Big Ten this year? Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's all going to depend upon the weather, number one. You know what? And, you know, in, in Ohio State, I, I don't know what Henderson's doing, Williams, I don't right. know what he's doing. <laughs> Coach, Day, imagine, Coach right? Day has blew that off this week. <laughs> Every time you ask him a question, he changes it to something else. So You're so right about you that. You know, when you got to go to, you know, Chip Trainum's hurt and you go to your – Four string running back. I mean, <laughs> you're right. Coach One Day. advantage. They're playing at home. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the defense uh, plays well enough to get the win, we hope, and we'll go from there. So here's the punt. It is fair caught at the, well, he'll let it bounce, but uh, number three, Grant Stauffer, fair, we called for the fair catch, but he let it roll out of bounds. So Let's see, we forget JT also loves Penn State. Yeah, that's right. You know, last last year he put on a show defensively, and hopefully he can match that effort again tomorrow. I noon saw, kickoff. Yeah, it's a noon kickoff. Uh, I saw where uh, C.J. Stroud's going to come back to be the guest picker on game day. I think that's kind of fun. He's having a heck of a rookie season for the Houston Texans. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he says to Reese Davis. Yeah, absolutely. Because Reese, Reese is calling for an upset tomorrow. <laughs> One and I mean no disrespect to Penn State. They got a heck of a quarterback coming. That young kid is a gunslinger. He absolutely is a really good player. 106 to go here. Redskins lead 30 to 3. You know who you remind you of? Another Ohio guy? Todd Blackledge. Yeah, absolutely. Get to that pocket and just rip it. Yep. So Wapakoneta will take the kneel there. Brady Burden in the game, young Brady Burden. You know Brady Burden? I work with his mother. Do you? And I know the family. Yeah, fine young man comes in, and uh, that young man gets to take a kneel down. Big thrill for him. He's a freshman, uh, backup quarterback. So good job for you, Brady Burden. He'll take the snap here. Take a, take a knee, and that will do it. The Wapakoneta Redskins defeat the Salina Bulldogs 30 to three, and they win a share of the Western Buckeye League title. Gilly, let's sum this one up. Well, I think it all started with the defense that Wapak displayed, the early turnover, the bugaboo, and then, you know, they put themselves in a hole with that 10 to nothing uh, spurt there that I'm thinking basketball, but 10-0 10 <laughs> spurt of scoring by Wapak, and, and Salina just couldn't get anything going. And when they did get it, things going, uh, Wapak either tightened up defensively or there was a miscue, and they just couldn't come away with any points. But give a lot of credit to Wapak. 
Walpaw coaching staff, you know, they could have folded the tents coming out 0-2, and they didn't. They regrouped, playing solid football right now. Kudos to Salina. You know, they run the table going into week 10 in the Western Buckeye League. They lost an earlier game in the beginning of the season to a very good Versailles team. I don't think – I think it was a shutout. Right, if my memory right. serves me correctly. You're right. And to go where they came from and, and, and Coach Bader and his coaching staff and his players, they're still walking out here with the league championship. Are they disappointed? Absolutely. Can they play better? No question. Clean a few things up. You know, take care of the bumps and bruises. Hopefully – you know, those kids are going to get an opportunity. You know, we see them walking off the field right now, two of them in a set of crutches and one in a walking boot. And there's a classy act by a couple of Walpock kids going over and hugging the Salina kids, you know, wishing them well. And that's, that's all part of high school athletics and sportsmanship, and that is great to see. That'll wrap it up from Wapakoneta High School. The Wapakoneta Redskins get a share of the Western Buckeye leg title by defeating the Salina Bulldogs 30-3. For Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSN crew, and we'll see you next week in the playoffs, Gilly.